All right, time start. Welcome to the seventh lecture, if I'm not uh, miscalculating anything. Uh, no, the sixth uh, lecture, layers and components. Uh, this is the last lecture about architecture, so we will be leaving architectural uh, stuff today, I hope, and start with a more detailed design uh, later this week, tomorrow and on Monday. Uh, some uh, short informations. The first batch of review mails has been sent out to those who have handed in their first workshop. Uh, I will be sending a, a second batch later this week as there are dropping in a few uh, results uh, in the last few days also. So you hand in your workshop in your groups. You select the group contact person and you also fill in the other group members. And you will get two reviews to do per group. And uh, when the reviews are done, I will also make another form for handing the reviews in and some information about that later this week. There is a lot of manual cut and pasting of email addresses and uh, links and stuff, so I hope I don't mess up too much. Uh, but if you spot something strange in your emails, uh, you can always contact me in some form. Also, don't hesitate to use the course forum to ask questions. I get some questions via email that are really interesting and good. So put them in the forum so everyone can contribute and see answers and have a discussion there. I think we have some, uh, some questions in the forum uh, right now, actually. So, OK. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I can say something about the workshop next week also. Prepare some kind of programming environment. You will be coding. And uh, maybe not as a surprise, there will be, you will be designing and you will be implementing something. So it's good to have a uh, programming environment language selected already. My tip to you is to, to make something console-based because the focus is not really making a beautiful user-friendly application, but rather to have a robust and changeable design. So go for something simple in the user interface. And console-based applications are probably the simplest way you can do it. I don't recommend using PHP, for example, or actually anything web-based, because it will add a lot of complexity for you. But it's your choice. So, um, uh, yeah. So last uh, week, we could see our little uh, dice game evolve from a more monolithic kind of uh, architecture through a model view separation. And also, the last thing we did was uh, to use the model view controller pattern to further divide the uh, user interface into two different components, a controller and a view. And we could see that the design actually became a lot better uh, in these uh, evolutions that we did. So the thing is that we will now actually continue and um, continue to improve our dice game uh, in a few ways. So there will be a, a bunch of coding uh, right now. So I hope everything will work out. So we, we can take our uh, model view controller version of the dice game and we can um, make a small modification of it. Uh, we will take the 
the die class here. Uh, and we will make a simulation. You could, you could say that uh, when you roll a die in real life, it does not generate a value instantly like this code does. It takes a while for the die to actually roll over the surface and stop, and then you can see the, the face value. And we will simulate that by, by uh, sleeping the thread for, for uh, a few milliseconds. We'll take two seconds here, just as an example. And this is, we also need a little try catch thing here. And we won't actually do anything there, so okay. When now roll is uh, called, the program will stop for two seconds, and then the die will get its value. So to play the game, it will take about four seconds now before we can see the result. So we will just take a try that one. early in the morning actually so and as you can see it takes a while for the result to show oh I won um, and maybe that's not so fun it's, it's a little bit more realistic, but it's not so fun, because when we roll in real life, we can roll the first dice first, and we can see the value, and then we can roll the second dice. So, and that makes the game very much more exciting, because we can see, oh, I got a four, I hope I get a three now. So how can we solve this problem? Well, maybe we could just There we had the values printed, one after the other. Is this a good solution? It is? No, why? Yeah, exactly. The architecture is, is broken. We have introduced user interface into the model. Not a good thing. So while it's functional, we can't do that. It's not allowed. So what should we do instead? Put it in the view. But how can the view get a hold of this information? From the controller. But you can return the value. Yeah, the, when, when we play the game, the dice are rolled, and when we get here, we return if we won or not, and then we print it. So we can't really return anything here. Uh, 
and uh, Svante has made the correct answer. We can have an observer. If you remember, the goal of the uh, model view controller pattern was also to construct a mechanism to let the model send events to the view and the controller. And this can be implemented using the observer pattern. So uh, let's just take a brief moment and look, take a look at the observer pattern and then we will take a look at how to implement it in our little game. And as you remember, pattern, name, problem, solution. So we have a variety of objects that are interested in changes in some other objects. These objects are often called subscribers and these are called publishers. And we want to avoid a direct coupling between the publishers to the subscribers. Because that would be the standard solution. Okay, if you're interested in something that I change, uh, send in the object as an argument and call the method that would like to have the uh, information. But we want to avoid this direct coupling, exactly as we want in the model view controller architecture. We don't want the model to be coupled to view or controller classes. And the solution is to define a listener interface. Let the subscriber 
realize this interface and let the publisher handle registration of subscribers and post events to them. So we need to construct an interface that encapsulates the events that we would like the publishers to send and that the subscribers are interested in. And we would let uh, add functionality for in the subscriber to handle re registration of uh, subscribers. The publisher should handle registration of subscribers and post events to them when they happen. So we need to make an interface. And in our case, the interface should encapsulate that a dice die have, have been rolled and possibly also send the face value that we would like to display in this case. So I will start actually by making another copy of the dice game, I think. So I did not want to copy the folders because then the GitHub information would, uh, uh, would continue to uh, be present. So that would probably mess things up. So we could just start by getting this stuff to compile again. And uh, we can get things up and running. So we need to change these packages. Sometimes you need to be really careful with these large and small letters in Java, and especially if
So there we go. So we have a compiling system now. Uh, and it takes a really long time. So okay, the observer pattern. We should make an interface to encapsulate the uh, event of a die, die being rolled. So let's do that. Something like that maybe. Where should we put this one? Should we put it in the view? Should we put it in the controller? Or should we put it in the model? No, we are building the implementation of the observer pattern. Okay. So we're doing the first step, so and that is... We will, be, we will be doing that. Okay. But this interface is the first, first step. Is that is a part of the observer solution, the observer pattern. We need, we need three things. We need the interface, we need someone to handle the registration and to send the events using the interface. And we need someone to realize the interface. So we need the interface, we need the publisher, and we need the subscriber. The one to publish events and the one that wants to subscribe to events using the interface. So we have a few, um, few things here in the view, says Sante, Emil says in the controller or the interface belongs to the model. So, we would like something in the user interface to be notified. So they are definitely the subscribers to the events. Probably something in the models, model is the publisher because that's where the event happens. And okay, now I want to publish this event to the subscribers. So it's likely that something in the user interface, in the view or in, in the controller, will implement the interface. So they are dependent on the interface. And something in the model will also be dependent on the interface because I need to collect these listeners in the publisher. And thinking about the model view controller pattern, we can have dependencies from the view you, or controller into the model, but we cannot have dependencies from the model into the view or controller. So this means that the interface must be in the, then we will have a dependency from the model into the controller. It must be in the model. Are you with me? Because otherwise you would get arrows from your uh, model package to your controller. Because if the interface is there, these, the publisher needs to have a list or something of objects that implements this interface. So you will get this dependency. So this must be in the model. So, all right, who should then be the publisher? Yeah. 
dies, die. Yeah, you could argue for that, okay, we need to send out events here. Absolutely, that could be one solution. Other. <coughs> suggestions? The game. So we have the dice game. You could also put the uh, event stuff here. I think both are, are good choices. I would actually personally probably put it in the dice game class because the di di dice game class is kind of like it's uh, will probably be already quite specific. And the die class, for me, feels like it's more reusable. So it, I would be hesitant to add another dependency from that class, because I would probably like to reuse that class in another scenario. But, but both would, would be good choices. So, but, but let's go for the, uh, the dice game, because there will be another point that I can make then. So we need some kind of list or something. Uh, so there we have the subscribers. We need some functionality to register a subscriber. And we need to send the event also, of course, when the dice have been rolled here. So, uh, Something like that, I also think we need to have like... I'm not really sure about that one, so we will compile this and, and see if we get any errors. I forgot an S uh, and return type. So we need to put the package here in the die roll listener interface.
So, stuff is at least compiling. Nothing will actually change yet because uh, we have no subscribers. So that is ne the next thing we need to do. We need to decide on a subscriber. Who should get the event that the die have, have been rolled? The view. That is the console type. Any other takers? No other takers? I would actually prefer to put it in the controller. Because in the view right now, we don't have any dependencies to the model, to anything in the model. And in the controller, we already have a dependency to the model, the dice game type. So for that reason, I think adding another dependency from the model does not hurt that much. But putting it in the view, the view would suddenly become dependent on that model. So therefore, I would select the controller. So you can use your, look at your dependencies in your types and see, OK, where should this go, actually? What would happen if I put it here? What would happen if I put it here? From a strict functionality point of view, you could put it in the view, or you could put it in the controller. I also think that as the uh, controller is responsible for handling coordination between model and view, the interaction, the architectural pattern also points towards, OK, events should probably be sent to the controller, and the controller can then decide what to do. So I think we should put uh, this in the controller. So we let the um, controller implement this. And like that, and just make some kind of uh, quick and dirty uh, printout so that we can know if something is working. And the last step that we need to do is to register the subscriber into the publisher. And we can do that in a number of places. I actually just uh, will do it uh, outside here in the, in the program class for now. So the publisher, the dice game object, should get a listener registered. And the only listener we have is the controller. Something like that. error. Yeah, OK. We stumbled upon something interesting in, in, um, that we have here. Because you can also encapsulate stuff in packages. That is why we have uh, a public class. This is the same in C Sharp, I think. If you don't have public classes, they won't be visible from the outside of the package. And this is a, a good thing. In this case, this interface should, of course, be visible. If we take a look at the die game, it could probably be private, because it's not used anywhere outside the model package. And it's a good thing to encapsulate stuff. So that is something that we definitely should do. Compiles. We'll try and uh, run it and see what happens. 
Oh, I quit. <laughs> get the first die, get the second die, and then you get the normal printout. Did you see it? It was kind of subtle. Okay. Let's tidy up uh, some code here. And uh, of course, we should not have this in the controller because suddenly the controller is tied to the console. So this is something that we need to send to the view. And we are now using the view both in this function, this operation, and in this operation. What needs to happen to the view then? This. Yeah, uh, as Sasanta says, the dice game works as a facade to the model package. We will talk a little bit more about facades later on in the, in the course. What must happen to this, to the view? We don't have a view here. What can we do? I can't write this. This object does not exist. Yeah, the view must be a, a member variable. So we must move the view here. Something like that, maybe, and we also need to have an object. Uh, we don't have it yet. Uh, so we probably need to send it in the constructor. That's a good, good thing because I don't think we can have a controller that works without a view. that and then we need to send the view to the controller in the constructor instead and not in this play operation something like that I think oh maybe that usually happens to me <laughs> so Yeah, of course, we need to implement the function also. Uh, I think we will just be kind of like printing it. And probably we need a space towards the end and not a new line to at least get something that is similar to what we want here. And we could actually probably remove these to start with to get a nicer printout. Maybe shame these also. You lost. You won. You uh, lost. You 
Yeah, thank you. D. Something like that. Uh, I also think it was something else in the compile. Yeah. And here we had a. Yeah, something like that. Let's just start and compile and run and play. Oh, I hope I get it too. No, I lost. Really, really exciting. But it's simple, so uh, that's a good thing. Uh, I don't think we need these anymore. Uh, and we can probably remove that from the uh, operation here also. So will be a little bit nicer, I think. <coughs> ah, it did not recompile that. Yeah, we could add that rule maybe later. If you get the same face values, you should also win. Yeah, uh, I see that now, <laughs> and I'm running the wrong code also. <laughs> that is the problem of using the uh, console a little bit too much. There we have it. I won. Yay. So we now have an implementation of the observer pattern. And we use the observer pattern to send messages from something within the model to something in the user interface. And to avoid the coupling, direct coupling between uh, view and model. So we also have another, um, some kind of nice uh, stuff going on here. Because if we look at this, this uh, class again, these two functions are not used anymore. So they are dead code, and we should remove dead code. So, okay, we removed some dead code. Do you see any other problem here? <clears throat> if you took, a, if you paid attention to when I when I wrote this, um, you could see that I did something. You should see this. Yeah, we have exactly the same code here. Except for that in this case we use the first dice, and in this case we use the second dice. And if you paid attention, I copy pasted and 
the copy pasting often in induces duplication. And duplication is not good. So we have duplication in a operation in the same class. What should we do? Put it together. Put it together in what way? I don't think we can put it together in another in some other for loop. Yeah. What? Yeah, exactly. If you have duplication, extract the duplicate stuff into a function of it of its own. We call it operation in UML. So I will be trying to use operation. It's called, I think, member functions or something in Java. So This code should be moved into a function of its own. And that function should be sent in a parameter. And that is the die to roll and get the value from. So instead, it will look something like roll die md. Less code, same code in one place. If you need to change this code, you only need to change it in one place. Much better. Duplication of code within the same type. Move the code that is duplicate into a function of its own, a private function often. Yeah, it should be void. And even in this small case, you can see that, oh, the duplicate code, it, it becomes much, this function becomes much clearer. You can understand what it does. It rolls the first die, it rolls the second die, and that should be removed. And then takes the results. So we did a little bit of refactoring there. It seems to uh, work. Yeah, questions? Besides it being an awesome game. Where to register the publishers? Yeah, I think uh, in our case, we did it uh, out here. And uh, you can also do it, let the controller register itself by sending in the game uh, in the constructor, maybe. best solution yeah I probably would let the uh, the controller register itself uh, the controllers register themselves uh, if I had multiple controller controllers because those are the ones that should be kind of like know that I need to register for this event I don't so I would probably put it in in the controllers in uh, in a real case especially where if I have multiple controllers and not all of them are interested in the events. And the trick also in, in, in the observer case is to how should we do this interface? Should it be a really small interface with stuff has happened? Should it be a really large interface with many different uh, operations? Then it will become tedious and hard to implement the subscribers. It will also probably change a lot, this interface. And this interface is, becomes kind of like a hotspot if it's used in, in this way between the, the model and the, the user interface. Because every, everything that can become an event in the model will be visible in this interface. Should you have multiple interfaces, maybe? 
So those are questions that are not easily answered and uh, something that you need to decide on your own. So the, the hard part about the observer pattern is not the implementation of the, the, uh, the subscriber or the publisher, but it's the construction of the interface between them. How should this interface look? Should we have multiple interfaces? Should we have many methods or whatnot? Yeah, I think it's time for a small break, uh, 15 minutes, and then we will continue. <laughs>